welcome to Keys to the Queendom, ladies and gents, whoever's listening. I wanted this episode to really be about, I can't believe I'm saying this, about myself, but more from a place of getting to know who I am so you know you can really gauge and know more about myself. My name is Tamara Maya. I am a business coach and I've done episodes like this in the past, but I feel it's a really nice reminder with anyone who has gone through hurdles, hardships, we all have a story and it's either whether we choose that story to, you know, create, um, you know, the destiny for our lives or whether we become, you know, victims of our past, but I'm here to, you know, really encourage you guys to see your story in a really authentic, beautiful thing. Because I always say to my queendom girls, it's about connecting the dots to where it all leads us to. And I truly believe that my story is something that has brought me to where I am now, becoming a business coach and also a keynote presenter. And I really look forward to expressing more on this journey with you guys and engaging more with you guys. If you do want to chat to me on my Instagram or, you know, send me an email or DM me, I'd love to hear your feedback. And also just my first piece of advice, once you hear this story, reflect on your own and how you can start to change how you look at the world and view everything happening as well. Hey guys, real quick, have you ever been stressed out or stuck on a problem you just can't seem to figure out and then a friend or a mentor comes along with like a fresh perspective and shows you a solution that completely changes the game for you? I'm smiling right now as I say this because I know I've had a ton of these moments while building my businesses and remembering back to all the people I have been helped by, which gets me so excited. So I want to pass on the information here and give you guys a favor to build this Queendom community. You know, whatever platform you are listening on, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and tune in every Wednesday because you just never know when you will hear that special something that completely changes the game for you. And when it happens, make sure you leave behind five stars so we know our efforts are making an impact. I love you guys. Let's get back into it. My story began right to, God, when I was a little girl and, you know, I've had people ask me, like, how did you get through life? And, you know, I always say my life is like a gypsy, you know, growing up for us, you know, we never had one home, you know, we never had a stable life, I always say. And that to me reflects almost the gypsy world where we're constantly moving around. Now, my dad was in the army and he's from Germany. Um, Also, just a bit of side note, I am from Germany. I was born there. I'm half Brazilian and German, so you can imagine I've got two great split personalities. And he always traveled for work. And that was what my life was like. And that created a lot of instability for myself, my mum, and my brother, and also my dad. And so while he was in the army, we were just used to him never being home. But also one of the biggest things I always mentioned from a very early age was we witnessed my father gambling all the time. So that was already a big hurdle in itself because he had an addiction, you know, and that is really something that still rocks me to this day that what I saw then seemed normal. And um, I can always, you know, explain this from another perspective, you know, what you experience from an early age as a child was safe and familiar. So I thought it was normal that my dad had money problems and was an addict and, you know, traveled for work all the times and was never home. We would see endless money coming in, see endless money leaving. You know, we moved houses constantly and he was always in and out of work. But anyway, what, you know, this story also led me to was my beautiful mum really holding the space for us, but also teaching us at a very young age you know, not to show or tell people what we were going through. And that was a big thing that I became really good at. So life for me was like a performance. And so, you know, once we moved from Germany to Australia, that was another huge shift and change and another, you know, moment in life where I always connect the dots of, you know, that perseverance and having to kind of always, you know, be on the move and put up with life and, you know, everything was going to be okay because that's what we were always told. And, you know, coming into Australia with English being my third language and, you know, 
grasping these new changes. As a kid, I was always easily able to adapt to change. I know it's probably why I've been able to change into so many different parts of my life with work and other aspects. But there were always things that I realized that I didn't understand. And one of the biggest things that led me to where I am now was, you know, because I had to go to six different schools, my mum was Brazilian. So her, you know, third language was actually English as well. It was hard for us to settle in and, you know, converse with with children. You know, my brother and I weren't very good at reading. We weren't very good at speaking English. And it was actually a really incredible moment. I have this one teacher to thank. But she said to my parents one time when I was around eight years old, you know, Tamara's got potential to do, you know, incredible things, but she lacks in reading. She lacks in writing. She can't speak English very well. You know, maybe get her into some kind of acting classes or something to that'll help her, you know, be able to learn how to read and write. And that's where my journey began. You know, there was a drama school across the road and my mum put me in there. And that's where I started to get really into entertainment. And I also was a dancer from a very young age. This is something my mum tells me too, and I don't know if it makes sense, but any mums listening, the reason she put me into dancing was because I was such a hyperactive child. <laughs> so I was a dancer from a very young age at three, and then I started acting at a very young age to support myself from learning how to speak English as well as present, as well as be on a stage. And so I grew to love the stage. So, you know, that for me became my escape. You know, going to dancing was something I absolutely loved, going to acting classes I loved. And very soon I started to see that there was already this entrepreneur, you know, person inside of me that, you know, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be famous. <laughs> that was my dream. So, you know, learning how to become really confident with English and how to speak on a stage, I wanted to perform. So my career began quite early with an agent where, you know, I went to acting classes and performed and auditioned, got rejected a million times. And obviously over high school and growing up, I ended up at McDonald College after obviously also going through six different schools growing up. And that was what I thought I was here to do on this planet. It was to become an actor. But it wasn't from a place of, you know, wanting to be seen and, you know, wanting to be popular and to perform. Acting brought this sensation of like following my dreams. And when there were so many things going on in my life when I was a little girl, you know, dad's still gambling. My dad also went to jail. You know, there were so many things that, you know, were happening behind the scenes and acting and dancing were my savior. And what that brought me was this sense of like, I want to fulfill my dreams but I also wanted to inspire, you know, other kids out there. <laughs> this is how silly I was, but really other kids out there that who were poor, who had struggles, you know, that they could do whatever they want in life if they only believed and did the things they loved. And that was just the thing I always stuck to from so early on. Now, a huge pinnacle moment that also created, you know, such a big change in my life, but also created this perseverance in myself was at the age of 12, you know, we became homeless on the street. And that was a huge thing having to go through, witnessing my mum, you know, having to, you know, tell us everything was going to be okay. And we're watching, you know, remove list, remove everything from our home because my dad hadn't paid rent for over two years. And that was a huge pinnacle moment then that brought me to, again, really believing and really becoming this woman of perseverance that I was really born to survive. You know, I really needed to, you know, do whatever it takes to, you know, build this career that I wanted to be an actor. So even from that early on incident and moving into growing up, having my first job at 14, it was always this hustle mentality and always, you know, do what you love and, you know, inspire other people. But as I started to grow up and all these, you know, things that I hid from so many people, I had also a lot of other demons that were coming up. You know, I started drinking when I was 12. By 15, my parents were divorced. And, you know, when I finished high school and then obviously started to travel a lot for dancing and acting and had also other, you know, other jobs to, you know, as a dancer and actor, you would know, you know, not always jobs were available. I had to, you know, very much still keep on this pretend mentality and have this mask on and show up for performance, show up for auditions, be this like bright bubbly human, 
but throughout my life and, you know, all these things we traversed, there were demons there. You know, underneath all of this performance and acting, I was this really sad, really lonely, really broken girl. And, you know, what masked that even more was drinking, was being on Duramine because I had to have this image of being a dancer. And I was also addicted to Steelnox, which is a sleeping tablet. tablet. And so whilst, you know, I was really good at pretending and hiding all these things, you know, at night I would go to bed and I just didn't want to feel, I just didn't want to think. I just wanted to kind of, you know, wake up the next day and continue on my journey of this goal and passion of following my dreams of being a dancer and actor. And one day <laughs> when I was, I think, 21, I had also been in a really good agent. It was called Grey Boy. I was really proud of myself for being in this agent because I had worked so hard to get into it. And for those listening, you know, when you're always wanting to be in the top tier of an agency or the top of a company or the top of the class or the top of something, whatever it is. And, you know, you've worked so hard to get there. I got into this agency and I worked so hard for it. But because of the stress of all of those things, one day I went to an audition. It was a Snow White audition and I had a panic attack. I had a panic attack. I walked out of there and told my agent I just was not good. And that was the first time that I made a decision to walk away of a dream I had or thought I had that was something I was meant to be doing. And I share this because I know at times there are things we believe we are meant to be doing, but our bodies tell us otherwise. So that was a really big pinnacle moment in my adult life, which brought me to also look at my shit from a different perspective. Was I happy? Was I in love with my body? Was I in love with myself? You know, was I doing all the right things to pursue this person of, you know, do everything you want in life, follow your dreams. But I felt like a fake. I felt like a, an absolute facade of a human telling people and showing people this dream life. And I was broken inside, taking all these different medications to, you know, fill this void and not let myself feel all the emotions I had. And that's what brought me to fitness. That's what brought me to, you know, looking at becoming a fitness coach. And I also then started to train and I found this new love, very similar to dancing and acting, where I really loved to train and help people, you know, get into their best bodies of their life. But with that, I had to obviously remove a lot of layers of the medication, the body dysmorphia I had, the body problems and how I looked at myself had, but how I did it was from a physical aspect. And for so long, I thought getting off the medication and focusing on training was enough. It was enough to, you know, look good and promote health and fitness. Yet there was still this thing inside of me, this black hole that I was still avoiding and pressing down every single day of my life. And so my journey continued on when you know, in the fitness space, I built up such an incredible, you know, image in this fitness space, in the online space, you know, I went from PT to being online very quickly. I built an app and, you know, became an online coach. And I was also able to market myself in the WBFF community world and become a pro bikini model. That was in 2018. But you know what? <laughs> I always have reflect about this too. 2018 was another really, really powerful yet horrible pinnacle moment of my life because just six, week, six weeks out from getting my pro card, I started to get more of that panic attack feeling, but not just once. It was every single day. I was in this huge low. I was having these, you know, crazy anger moments crazy crying episodes. I had also just gone through a breakup. I traveled to Thailand. I ran away, which is great what I do. And six weeks out of my show before I got my pro card, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress from my therapist. So honestly, one of the hardest things I experienced in my adult life after years of just pushing things down, everything just surfaced. And, you know, being a fitness coach, having to also compete in six weeks time, dealing with a breakup, it was like she came to me and said, wow, you 
have basically experienced so much trauma that you haven't faced it and you just got to the point where you couldn't anymore. And I know this will feel very relatable to you guys listening, you know, feeling like you've been the strong person for so long, you have, you know, been able to hide and pretend. Well, I'm telling you now, learning all of this and reflecting on all of this, it catches up. And pretty soon we are faced with having to unravel and unpeel all the layers of what we thought we are and coming to the truth, which was, I didn't love myself. And that was a big thing for me to really bring forward in 2018. Yes. And you know what? I'm so grateful I went through it and I'm so grateful I won my pro card, but that was again, a huge pinnacle moment where my business changed because I was all just physical, but I wasn't about the internal work. And that's how I started the mindset work. You know, yes, I went to therapy, but then I started to look at other ways of, you know, getting help. I started to work with healers, holistic coaches. I started to look into my business as a fitness coach and started to ask the questions of, is this who I am? Is this who I really want to become? Am I really a fitness coach anymore? And then we went through COVID in 2019. And I was able to, again, reflect on my own shit even more, single, alone, in a studio apartment on the northern beaches. And I had to look very deep within myself and go, am I who I am? Am I happy with my life? Yes, I have a successful business, but I, you know, do I really want to be teaching women just fitness? And the answer was no. And it was fucking scary. And I was terrified. I was single in the Northern beaches, in a studio apartment, dealing with COVID. Well, we all dealt with COVID, but being by myself, having to make this huge decision of basically starting from scratch. And I knew in that moment, I just had to, I had to go balls deep in this healing process of unraveling all of this stuff that I chose to ignore. And I speak about this quite often because what happens when we are, you know, hiding and pretending and not choosing to look at our own shit, you're still choosing, you're still choosing to not look at it. And so I made that decision to look at my shit and to also build a life that I truly wanted from a business perspective, from a relationship perspective, from who I wanted to really, you know, connect with as well. And that was what brought me to becoming a life coach and a business coach because I was done pretending. I was done hiding. You know, fitness did bring me so many incredible things, but what became such a reward for me was becoming a coach in the space of healing, but also what brought more growth and expansion of that, which became even more scarier was I had this ability to bring women to becoming the version of themselves and building their dream empire. And I was so scared, so terrified because I thought I was just a fitness coach. I was just a pro bikini model girl. I was just a life coach. No, I was a queen and I needed to see that. So we're near at the end of the episode. I know I don't want it to end either. And I love you guys so much for tuning in every week and coming to this journey with me. But the good news is it doesn't have to end here. If you've gotten value from today, I have something really special I want to share with you. Now, most people are very dedicated to learning from podcasts or books, but when it comes to taking the action required to make these ambitions come true, they retreat back to their comfort zone and listen to another podcast. But I know that there is a small group of queens listening right now that are hungry for more. You want complete freedom over how you spend your time and money, and you want to be able to do it from anywhere in the world. I understand you. I was you. And now I have complete freedom over my time, location, and money. And I did it all with my social media blueprint. And if you are part of the group that takes action towards your dream life, 
I have included an exclusive link for you to jump on board below at 50% off. I appreciate you queens all so much. Now let's finish this one with a bang. But also what brought more growth and expansion of that, which became even more scarier, was I had this ability to bring women to becoming the version of themselves and building their dream empire. And I was so scared, so terrified, because I thought I was just a fitness coach. I was just a pro bikini model girl. I was just a life coach. No, I was a queen and I needed to see that. But I had all of this stuff come up because I was afraid of what people would think who I was becoming. Who is this girl now? She was a fitness coach, life coach, business coach. And this is why Keys to the Queendom is really going to support you guys to understand, you know, there's beliefs and the believer. You can have all of these beliefs of who you thought you are, but when you truly believe in who you are meant to be, everything else becomes irrelevant. You know, you start to let go of the fear of, What if it fails? You start to let go of the fear of judgment. You start to just ignore the noise and purely just be in your heart and just truly, like truly just believe that, you know what, I'm going to do all and everything to build this life that I deserve from an internal perspective and an outward perspective. And again, why I'm sharing all of this for you guys, why I went through all of the hurdles, the struggles, the hardships, I've always been very big on embracing them because again, once you connect the dots of all of it, you can go and look back and go, fuck, I went through a lot, but I got out of it. I was able to achieve so much. I was able to start creating this world and life that I deserve. I was able to build my empire and that is why I'm here. I actually didn't know what my purpose was for such a long time until recently when I was able to reflect and go, I'm a business coach. I can now say it with confidence and praise. I am a business coach. I am an entrepreneur. I am a queen. I am a keynote presenter. I am going to become an international guest speaker. And I say that with conviction and absolute certainty. Because for so long, I had so much uncertainty of who I was. So while this episode is about me, I really truly believe it will guide you guys to really look within and to really see how your life is playing out merely by the choices and the not choices you make. So what I really want you guys to now know is like your life begins right now in this very moment and choose life, choose to work on yourself, choose to heal, choose to build your queendom because I thought because I was poor that I would never be able to experience this sense of freedom and love. And I've also been able to bring in love. I have this incredible partner in my life that I never thought I was able to experience because of the beliefs I had and what I witnessed growing up, what I thought was normal, what I thought was safe, what I thought was familiar. But once you become so aware of all of this program belief bullshit, you actually get to create what you truly desire. Let that sink in. You get to create the life and the desires you truly want. And it begins with you. It begins with you. Choosing you every single day and just committing to yourself. And I ask you guys right now to commit to do the work, to open your heart and see the worth within yourself and really start to create your empire and your queendom for yourself and for the people you love.